the determining council of God has decided this day that twelve souls will be delivered from hell for the span of one hour. During this time, they will be given an opportunity to explain the horrors of hell as it pertains to them. Each soul will be given a few minutes to explain why they are in hell, as they all know why. After that, the demons will be instructed to come and escort them back to hell. And each and every one of them will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. The return back to hell won't be easy, as these twelve souls will be fighting, kicking, and screaming, and begging for more time. Their cries are to no avail and go unheard. For their time on earth was their opportunity to get it right. First of all, I'd like to say to you all that by now you should know why you are here. And just in case you don't, I'm going to tell you again. I want you to realize how stupid you were to go against the Almighty. I mean, how dumb can you be? The scriptures were right there telling you how you should live, and providing you detail by detail about what you should and should not do. The Almighty even told you that I would try to deceive you. The fact that you are here proves that I accomplished that in your lives. Stupid humans. You had the keys to heaven, but it was so simple and easy to convince you that neither I nor God nor heaven nor hell really existed. If you really believe in the existence of a burning hell, then you would have taken heed a lot better than your special occasion appearances at church. For some of you, your total ignorance of God what amazes me is how simple it was to fool some of you. No, I need you to listen up. When I call you forth, you will have only a few moments to explain why you are in hell. First up, false prophet, come forth. Okay. Okay. I didn't take God's word too serious. <laughs> I knew what the scripture was saying, but I was I, I was deceived by money, greed, lasciviousness, and I ignored God's word. I determined within myself that I had plenty of time to get things right with God. I know I used the gospel for gain. Not, not spiritual gain, but financial gain. I turned the gospel of Christ into, into merchandise. I looked at the whole thing. You know, it was, you know, it was a way to get money. I, re re I remember when I, when I first decided to go to the ministry. It had nothing to do, nothing at all to do with ministering to, to people and leading souls to Christ. Nothing at all. I wish I had a chance to 
I wish I had a chance to do it all over again. I would have never disrespected and dishonored God in that way. I got greedy and I just, I just totally ignored the word of God and just kind of got caught up in the fame of being called a prophet. You know, a false prophet, you know, that's what I was. I was a false prophet, you know, I got caught up in the fame of being called a prophet. You know, I can remember sometimes I would even laugh at my followers. You know, you should never follow. You should never follow after a man and lose focus on Christ. Never lose focus on Christ. Just make sure that your leader is a true man of God. <laughs> You'll find yourself right here in hell, begging for mercy every day. I can't even begin to tell you how horrible this place is. Every moment... Every moment is... Torment. It's torment. I wish there was a such thing as pain in hell. Because then maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Pain only describes what happens on earth. Utter torment and treachery and unimaginable suffering is the only way to describe what goes on in hell. We are tormented day and night, and the pain is just... Disrespected them and I showed no mercy. 
I didn't listen to my parents at all. I was just so disrespectful. Just so disrespectful. <laughs> I did what I saw my friends do and I caused a lot of strain in my family. I remember. I remember the day I died. My mom told me that morning that we were expecting, we were expecting guests. That we were going to have a special dinner. She told me to come right home after school. And I had purposed in my mind that I wasn't going to come home after school. I was going to do what I wanted to do. So, I went. I went to the mall with my friends. And I decided, I said, we're going to stay here as long as possible. Because I, I just wanted to make my mom mad. I wanted to ruin her special dinner. I knew we had family coming over and mom just wanted everything to be perfect. And because of the way I was, I just... I messed the whole thing up. But when I finally decided to go home that day, my friend, my friend, we were driving up the road. It was after 9 o'clock. I should have been home hours ago. I should have come home right after school. But after we left the mall, my friend, she was driving. She was driving up the road. And she swerved to try, try to miss a deer in the road. She saw it at the last minute. And we went off the road. We hit a tree. It was horrible because, because the next thing I remember, I, I woke up in, in hell. I, I woke up in, in hell. Oh my god. It's too late to cry now. Oh my god. I thought I was doing something. I thought I was being cool. I thought it was cool to curse my parents out. But now I wish my mother and my father could just hold me one more time. I would beg them to forgive me. Now that I'm here, I can really see how stupid it was. Not to listen to them. Most of the time, they wanted me to do something as simple as wash dishes. I made such a big deal out of that. I would give anything, just anything, to be able to dip my fingers in some dish water and wash dishes. Heck, I would even drink the dish water. I am tormented by flames that I can't even imagine what a drop of water tastes like anymore. I've stopped questioning God about why I'm here, but now I realize it was my own fault. The Bible says that a disobedient child will live half their days. So I cut my own time short. It told me to honor my mother and father and that my days would be long in the land. I didn't really believe any of that. I didn't believe anything would ever happen to me. So I did what I wanted to do. Now I paid for it. Now I pay for it for all eternity. I can never get out of here. Please. Please, God, give me one more chance. Just give me one more chance. I promise I'll treat my very right. I hope no one ever has to come to this place. It's far worse than anything you can ever imagine. <laughs>
it was all so clear. I mean, it was right there in the Bible. It was said that men should not burn and lust within their own selves for another man, likewise women for other women. To be more precise, this is exactly what the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, and burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over, he gave us over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 1 Kings 14 verse 24 says, And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the land which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Well, I, I know everyone else came, came and they just, you know, gave their story and some of them gave what sound to me to be excuses or whatever, but all I can come to you with is the word of God because, you know, I called myself a gay Christian, but uh, I knew that there was no such thing as a gay Christian. I knew that I was supposed to do right and, and cry out to God for deliverance or whatever it was. But I followed after this group that just, you know, they said that it's okay to be gay and to be Christian, and they gave me all of their reasons, but I had God's reasons right here in black and white. So that's why I'm reading scripture, because I know it was wrong. First Kings 15 and 12, it says, And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Sodomites. That's what it means to be a gay or a sodomite. 1 Kings 23 and 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. You know, so many, so many gay Christians, they, they, justify in their heads. I was one of them. I justified in my head wrongdoing. I mean, there are so many people here who have done so many different things, but we gays, we call ourselves gay Christian. We can't be Christian no more than someone who commits adultery or uh, a child molester or pedophile or murderer. We too have to turn away from our sins. First Kings 14 and 21 says, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, 
that you commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. There are more, but that one said it all. Even the story of Sodom and Gomorrah was a clear example to me of how much God hated that homosexual spirit. I knew something was vile about my deeds because every time I engaged in a homosexual deed, I felt filthy and low down. I knew it was nasty and not right. And it goes even deeper than that. There were times when I felt an evil presence in my body and wanted to kill myself. I should have known not to trust Satan. The Bible said that he was a liar and a deceiver. I figured my own way and now I am in hell tormented. Your time is up. <laughs> Stop whining and speak! <laughs> Ain't nobody tough down here! Ain't nobody tough down here! Ain't no tough people down here! Everybody down here the same! We all, we all just beg for mercy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I had so much anger and rage in me that it just kind of took me over. You know, all of us get mad or upset at times, but I just took it to a whole new level. The Bible says thou shalt not kill, but that didn't mean nothing to me. If somebody got in my way, it wasn't no big deal to pull out my gun and beat him or shoot him or smack him down. I used my own abuse as a child to justify my violence. I felt like since, you know, since I was in use, I could just do what I wanted to do. If somebody made me mad, I remember one day I punched out an old lady. I punched her in the face just for making a smart remark about me. I didn't care who saw it either. Well, it's easy to be all big and bad when you don't know what's really waiting on you. I never wanted to hear nothing about God because I blamed him for how bad my life was. See? I see now that it was, it was me, it was my fault. I should have let that stuff go. It took some time to find out how to be free from all that mess in my life. Instead, I stood in my own hate and I just, you know, I got more and more violent. I hated myself when I was like that. My mama always said that there's somebody bigger and better than I was. I found that out the hard way. I got into a fight one night with this dude at the nightclub. We both pulled out our guns. I shot him and he shot me. And the reason why I know that guy died is because I ran into him right here in hell. We both died with the hell. All that hatred is gone, and we, we, we both down here saying, what was it all for? We can't ever get out of here. I wish I had a chance to live my life. There are a lot of things I can change. Lord Jesus, please. 
Please just let me wake up, fat lad. This is just some horrible nightmare. I'm sorry for my wicked way. Give me another chance. There is no mercy here. I know I don't deserve nothing from you. But I just didn't know. I didn't know. Sorry.
I was so stupid. Now that I'm here and I can see that there's no black man or white man, there's no discrimination in hell. I see now how ignorant it was to be racist. This was a setup by Satan to divide men and cause more hatred to further his evil agenda. I let something as ignorant as hating someone's skin color cause me to go to hell. I ignored the fact that the Bible says all men were created equal and that of one blood all nations were created to dwell over the face of the earth. I allowed the lies passed down by my ancestors to cloud my own views and continued to fuel the generational hatred. I lived in a house where it was normal to call a black man a nigger and think nothing of it. Sometimes, for no reason at all, someone would just say something simple and it turned into an all-out I hate niggers conversation. I allowed my whole life to be consumed with so much hatred that I completely ignored what the Bible said about loving your neighbor. I guess somehow I convinced myself that they were just a bunch of apes and monkeys, that they weren't even real human beings. That's how that's how I justified it in my head. That's how I justified the hatred of blacks and other races. Now that I'm here in hell, I realize that I ain't even white. We're all the same. There's no color, no race, no male, no female, just tormented souls. We're all the same here. Satan lied to me and everybody here. We all ignore God's truth. If I knew on earth what I know now, I would have never wasted my time hating someone for being different. I would have spent more time loving and helping people. But instead, I come from a background of hate mongers and murderers. And Lord, Lord, I'm so sorry for ever using the word that caused so much pain to so many people. I just want people to understand just how vulgar and atrocious it was. If any of my relatives see or hear this, I want you to know that you have got to stop this. It ain't right. It just ain't worth it. You cannot continue hating because someone is different. If you want to hate someone, hate Satan. He's out to get you. There are people of all backgrounds, ages, lifestyles, and religions here in hell. We are all equally tormented. There is no segregation in hell. There's no white part of hell or no black part. Everyone is all thrown in together into a large heap of burning, stinking flesh that is never consumed by these tormenting flames. Somehow, our bodies keep replenishing themselves to keep the pain going. I couldn't even begin to explain the presence of evil in this place. It is too horrible to describe. Please let me out. I don't want to be here anymore.
need to sleep around was wrong. But I convinced myself that this was my body. And that I could do what I wanted with it. Every chance I got, I was sleeping around. I never wanted to be married because I knew it would stop me from playing around. I was one of those player player type fellas. I thought getting all the women was the way to go. And all I cared about was how good it felt. Half the time I didn't even use protection. That's how I ended up getting sick and dying of AIDS. Man, I guess that's why I'm here right now. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. I remember when I was first diagnosed with full-blown AIDS. And from that moment on, my life had changed. I knew the day would come that I was gonna die. I should have taken heed. I kinda just brush it off and continue to live my life. I even had the nerve to continue sleeping around. And I didn't care if I gave somebody aid. I know now the joys of seeing only last the season. I've been in here more than two years now. And it seems like more than the 27 years that I lived on earth. I was so dumb to think that I could just live my life that reckless and not have to suffer the consequences. I know it didn't help things with me intentionally giving AIDS to people. Y'all women need to stop being so stupid. All this sleeping around and having babies by these strange men just ain't cool. Think about your soul. It ain't worth your soul. Most men are talking about marriage. It's never about some girl to give it up easy. It's always about some young lady that carries herself like a lady. You know, one of those Proverbs 31 women. I'm only saying all this because I don't want nobody else to come down to this place. I want out. I want out and can't get out. God, I'm sorry for all this. I need to be out of here. <laughs> the Bible says me is all fornication and the righteousness of wickedness. It says that the body is not the fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Play fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sin against his own body. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Sunday and paid my tithes and gave to the poor 
every Christmas. I did every good deed I could possibly think of without even batting an eye. I thought that I pleased God because I read a Bible verse every day. I went to Sunday school and baked pastries for our church functions. I fed the little kittens that came to my porch. I mean, I tried my best to do good and be a fairly nice person, you know? I mean, I, I, my pastor told us that, you know, that it was a sign of the Holy Spirit to, to do good deeds and just be an overall nice person. I can remember one day giving a dollar to a homeless man and nodding my head at him, you know, just to let him know that I cared, you know? I mean, most would think that that's all that, that was required, right? I did good and I was faithful to the church. You know, I thought I would be in heaven, you know? I thought I would be in heaven right now. I remember the day I went into the hospital. I was, you know, in such, such pain and I was very tired. I had just had a heart attack and I can also remember saying to myself, you know, God, uh, if, if you're ready to take me home, go ahead, you know, I'm ready. You know, when I felt like I was leaving my body, I was being drawn into the light. I saw my dead relative bidding me to come. They were calling me towards the light to come with them. And then the final call came from my child that had died years, many, many years ago. When I heard the voice say, Mom, come with me to the other side. It's beautiful over here. That's when I let go. As I continued towards the light, I realized that those were not my relatives. They were not my loved ones. They were demons beckoning me to hell. They deceived me. I began falling fast into the flames and I could feel the demons clawing at my flesh and the strong presence of every fear and evil you could ever imagine. It is all intensified and unquenching. Everything is so horrible here and I don't want my family to come to this place. If you have not given your life to Christ, that you find yourself in a religious state of false salvation, you must change. Don't be so religious that you forget that more is required of you. You must seek God in His Word for the truth. Get to know God. Don't be one of those that say in that great notable day, Lord, Lord, haven't I done many wonderful things in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And have him say to you, Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. There is so much more than giving to the poor and going to church every Sunday. You must present your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable unto God and guess what that is your reasonable service it is required of you Because they need so much. 
This is what it need, much I didn't, I didn't need God. He only came up. You know, if I, if I saw his name on the back of my money or something like that. I was a pretty good person on earth, I thought. But now I know that. That a man profits nothing by gaining this world if his soul is lost. I had a six figure income. <laughs> I was on top of the world. My home was larger than most public libraries. My wardrobe was stuffed into a 1,000 square foot walk-in closet. I had an Olympic-sized swimming pool. I felt like me and my family deserved all that because, you know, we worked so hard. We worked so hard to get. We were good people. We didn't bother anybody. I wasn't like the average rich person who looked down at the poor. I, I gave to charities all the time. I didn't feel like I needed to kneel and pray every night to God. We had it all. I can now see. I can now see how I didn't have anything. Because I didn't have God in my life. One thing for sure. Hell. It's the biggest eye opener anybody could ever, ever have. No one down here can say that they shouldn't be here. This is what mankind deserves. For all to see it that's in the world. <laughs> oh God. Jesus died for our sins. But most of us were just too ignorant to even realize what a sacrifice he made. It's over for me. But, but if my family can hear this, and my family, if anybody in my family can hear this, Give your life to Jesus. Get saved. Search the Bible for the truth. I wish I did. I wish I did. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 20, For I say unto you that accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. It also says in Isaiah 64 and 6, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Oh God, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. I know that I deserve this. But I want to plead my case before you, God. I need you to hear me and understand. I want to serve you now. I want to be your child. Help me out of this. I now know that I was a wicked sinner. And I'm at your mercy, please, God, please! <laughs> 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 Nobody could.
could have told me that something as simple as a lying tongue could send you to hell. I mean, I didn't really do anything bad in my life, but I was always lying and fabricating to impress people. <laughs> Why? Why was it so important for me to impress people? I don't even care about that anymore. I'm just tormented and I just wish I could get one drop of water. Lord, I'm so sorry. I never really gave you any thought, just considered my life to be mine. I never felt like I had to answer to any deity. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> if there was a way I could get another chance, I would just be so thankful. I would read my Bible and find out more about you. There's no way I would waste my time trying to please people making up all that jive and kicking out all these lies. More than ever now, I know you real. I know you real. I should have listened to my grandma. You know, deep down inside, I knew you were real, but I just ignored it because I was too busy having fun. Man, I'm so sorry. This is way worse than anything I could ever imagine on earth. I can never get rest again. They ain't no sleeping in hell. Ain't no sleeping in hell. The sorrow and the suffering is continuous. I can't ever get out. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I want out. Give me another chance, Lord. Please don't do this to me. I get it now. I know better now. I do whatever you ask me to do. Please don't leave me here. I need another chance. I know this is supposed to be forever, but I, I just can't take it no more. Don't do this to me. I do whatever it takes to please you, Lord. Just have mercy on me. I won't ever tell another lie. I don't even know why I did it to begin with. It just ain't worth it. Man, it ain't worth it. I know I don't have a right to compare my sins with murderers and rapists or anything like that. But on earth, I just didn't think I was hurting anybody telling a few lies. But now I know that you hate lies just as much as you hate any other sin. Now I know. Please don't hold me to this. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I know that the Bible says that the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the labors burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If I had known it was this serious, God, I promise you, I promise you, it wouldn't have been like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, Lord. 
that was just the beginning of an eternity in, in hell. Why? Why? I didn't know. I didn't know if this place existed. All of the stress I went through on Earth could be magnified a million times and still would not amount to the suffering I have here. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! This place is indescribable. I don't wish this type of punishment on anyone, not even my worst enemy. God, if you're hearing this, I beg of you, please, give me another chance. I ended my own life. I ended my life too soon. This wasn't the time you picked for me. If I had just waited, then maybe, maybe I could have come around to getting to know you. Knowing what I know now. I would give my life to you! Completely! Please, God! Please don't leave me here! Not like this! I can't take it anymore! The pain is just too much to bear! I would give up my career! And all of the money that I ever... All of the, all of the money that I ever had! to totally serve you, God. <laughs>